Good morning. This video is for Sunday, uh, July 25th, and uh, we're in a vacation setting, but we want to keep the videos going uh, every Wednesday and every Sunday. And our video today is wavering, doubting, or believing prayer. So that you, you can choose what kind of prayer you're going to pray. Let's go to, let's go to prayer right now. Our Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to bring the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. That we thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding us. We thank you, Lord, for your living holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. So our title again is Wavering, Doubting, or Believing Prayer. And Satan, the enemy of God and the enemy of your soul, loves to rob Christians of, of prayer. He wants to rob us of answered prayer. And the way he can do that is by bringing doubt, fear, and unbelief, where we won't, we won't get if we don't ask with faith. In James chapter 1, James, the brother of the Lord, wrote, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. And this is pretty strong. James is saying, if you're asking with doubt and rather than faith, don't expect much. You, you, need to, you need to pray with faith. You need to know that the Lord is a God. He's a God who hears and answers prayer. So all prayer has to be absent of doubt. We've got to get that doubt. Ask the Lord to take it. Uh, doubt prevents believing and receiving answers. Doubt is not faith, therefore it's not of God. If it's not of God, then it must be sin. So fear, doubt, unbelief, all these things need to be considered sin, so we need to repent of it, ask the Lord to forgive us for being fearful, for doubting, and for unbelieving, and put your trust in God. Put your trust in Him. He is creator God. You can trust Him with everything, not just some things, but with everything. Uh, some people trust the Lord for the little things. Some people trust the Lord or, or, or ask Him when, only when they're facing something big. You can trust Him with everything. Some have trouble trusting beyond the present. If, if the answer doesn't come immediately, they just give up. They, they, so they just think, well, He didn't answer, so I'm going to give up. He wants you to be persistent in prayer. So if it doesn't happen, you don't see an answer, then ask some more. It may not be God's timing. It may not be the way that you wanted him to answer it, but you, you keep praying. You keep believing. Some, some give up because they can't confirm it with human senses. They lose hope and they give up because they can't see it happening. They can't feel it happening. Uh, that doesn't mean God isn't answering. Uh, in Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith has nothing to do with our senses. Faith has to do with believing, hoping, trusting, and, and letting God bring the answer. So senses are not involved. In James 5 and 15 it says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. It's a prayer of faith. And when we pray in faith believing, we need to hold our confession of faith. In other words, continue to believe and continue to speak. Well, I ask, I'm asking the Lord and I'm believing that he's going to answer. So should we give up because God didn't answer right away? Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast, fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. So God who has promised us everything we have need of is faithful. We've seen over and over again examples uh, in, in the church and among friends and family members that have prayed and waited and eventually the Lord answered in his way and in his timing. You don't give up. You continue to ask. Be persistent in prayer. And then we want to go to Mark uh, chapter 11 and uh, Mark chapter 11 verses 22 through 24 so Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whatever who, or whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. 
Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So I don't know what your mountain is. The, the Lord gives this example of a mountain being cast into the sea. And you think that's, that's pretty wild. But think about some of the mountains you face. A lot of times we, we face mountains, uh, problems, and we think they're, they're just, it, it's just as impossible as a mountain being cast in the sea. Jesus says, no, believe and ask, trust the Lord, and you'll see these mountains in your life being moved out of the way. Uh, defeat always begins in the mind. It's critical that we, we have our thoughts uh, focused on the Word of God, not what we see, not what we feel, not what we think, but upon the Word of God. Satan will always try to suggest that the problem is, oh, this one's too big for God. Uh, he's a liar. He's the enemy of God, and he's your enemy, and he will lie about your God. He will say, this problem's too big for God. You might as well give up. And we, we cannot listen to that lie. We have to be vigilant and stop, alert. We need, we need to be vigilant and alert and stop the fear and the doubt and un, unbelief from coming through the, into the door of our mind. You can dwell, you can, you can try to reason and dwell on these things, doubt and, and fear, and it's only gonna bring you down, it's only gonna discourage you, and your answer won't come because you're trying to calculate it in your own understanding and you're listening to the lies of the enemy. So we need to be vigilant, you need to be on guard, and you need to be alert to the lies of the enemy. Don't entertain doubts or try to reason or solve the problem. Uh, trust Creator God, your Savior. Uh, you know, reason didn't work for Adam and Eve. The enemy started suggesting to them, oh, go ahead and take of that tree, it, you won't die. He was giving a half-truth. You're not going to physically die, but you're going to spiritually die because of sin. So we can't listen to the enemy. He will suggest, he will lie and trick us. So we need to cast out any, any fear, doubt, unbelief, reasoning, suggestions from the enemy. Cast them out of your mind. Faith has to be rooted and rested in the Word of God. Get your Bible open and read it for yourself. Don't listen to somebody on the radio or TV or on the internet telling you you need to believe this, you need to believe that. Open, your, open up your Bible and see what the Lord is saying to you personally. It's, it's a person, we have a personal Savior and this word is personal to each of us. We need to know what the Lord is saying. Uh, admitting doubt or fear or dwelling on it stops God's blessing. Let's quickly, let's look again at James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. But let him ask in faith with no doubt, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, tossed, driven and tossed by the wind, and aimlessly being tossed around. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. So after we've talked about fear, doubt, and unbelief, the suggestions of the enemy, you can see there's a lot more meaning to what James says in chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Um, we need to guard our thinking. Guard your mind with the word of God and prayer. Thinking and words are critical to our victories, to our answers. Uh, words are powerful, uh, powerful for faith, but words can also be powerful for doubt. So guard your thinking, guard your mind, and guard what you say, your speech. Pro Proverbs 6 and 2 says, you are snared by the words of your mouth, you are taken by the words of your mouth. So that is so accurate. We can say, we can speak faith or we can speak fear. We can speak a positive, we can speak doubt. We have the choice. So be careful what you think, be careful what you speak. Speak it according to the word of God. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The fruit, the fruit of the tongue. The fruit of the tongue can be faithful or it can be doubtful. And so we need to produce the correct fruit. We have control over that. We can produce the correct, correct fruit of the tongue. 
When we speak God's word and truth, we speak life. To speak doubt, fear, negative, unbelief, uh, negative reports is to speak failure and death. So we want to speak life. We want to speak truth and life rather than a death, failure and death. James 4 and 7 says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And how do we resist the devil? Just like Jesus did. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. And Jesus was led up in the Spirit, beginning with verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. And now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered, listen, be careful and listen to Jesus' answers. Jesus says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus says, it is written. He answers by the word of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him up on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So the enemy then goes, well, I'll use the word against him. And Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So see, the, the devil was trying to trick Jesus with the, with the word. Jesus answers with the word. Again, the devil took him up to a, a, on, on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. And after that third temptation, then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to the Lord. So it stands to reason that many are having trouble resisting the lies of the devil because they lack an understanding of Scripture. Teaching uh, truth and speaking truth, uh, trust and faith, we, we, we've got to get a hold of what the Word says. One's faith can't rise above your, above your own knowledge of the Scripture. If you don't know the scripture, then it limits your faith. The more you know the word, the stronger your faith and your trust in the Lord, the more powerful your prayers and more answers coming your way. The, and the word of God is a, you can measure it. You measure it to yourself and then the, the measure of the answers, the measure of victory comes from how much of the word you have measured to yourself. If you just measure a thimble full, then you're going to have a lot of doubt. But if you take a big scoop of the Word of God, you're going to see powerful re results. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word by the Word of God. A Christian's spiritual condition will always parallel their faith in the Word of God. You have to, this is the Word of the Lord. You have to trust Him and trust what He says, His Word. Psalms 107 and 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That's a, that's a powerful scripture. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Pro problems, uh, desperate situations, whatever you want to call it, the, this scripture calls it destructions. Some of them are attacks from the outside. Some are uh, self-inflicted destructions or problems that we've gotten ourselves into. Another uh, area of Proverbs is chapter 4. And let's look at verses 20 through 22. We're going to wrap it up here in a moment. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So keep your eyes on the word. Keep the word in your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Oh, that's, that's powerful. In closing, it comes to all, uh, all realms of victory. Come healing, deliverance, blessing, uh, prosperity, whatever the need is. These things are God's will for you. 
and they come by your trusting him, believing his word. Many Christians begin their prayers with a doubtful uh, phrase. If it be your will, Lord. Well, it is his will to bless his children. It is his will to heal. It is his will to deliver, to give victory, to, to bring blessing. And so we don't need to pray if it's your will. If you belong to the Lord, it's his will to take care of you. So pray according to his word. Don't say if it's your will. Pray the scripture. If you know the scripture, then you can pray the scripture. And so, first of all, know his word and you will know his will. That, that You don't have to say, if it's your will. If you know his word, you will know his will. Then pray without doubt, having total trust in him. Total trust in the Lord. We're his children. We're his little children. And he has us in his hands. And he wants us to trust us. Trust him, just like that little toddler that looks his, at his mom or dad and he trusts them for care and for comfort and so on. So pray without doubt, having total trust in the Lord. After asking according to his word and his will, we can certainly add to it in your time, Lord. Because we don't know his way. We don't know his perfect timing. We don't know the best way to answer prayer. We might have think we have it all figured out in our head. Well, God, I'm asking you to do it this way. And he may have a plan and a way that exceeds anything that we would have ever imagined or we could have ever uh, contrived or developed in our own understanding. So we don't know the best way to answer. His way and his timing is always perfect. We don't know the best way. We don't know the best timing, but God does. You may have to go through something for a while, waiting for the Lord to answer, to be a witness for other people. They might be watching you and seeing, are you really going to trust in the Lord or not? And, and this is part of our Christian testimony too, in our Christian life. A lot of what we go through is for the benefit of others, so that they will see how the Lord is good and he watches over us and we trust him. They will learn to trust the Lord as you trust the Lord. So we're going we're gonna to close now in prayer. Lord, I, I pray uh, that, that this word, this word will permeate our, our soul, our body, soul, and spirit. We'll, we'll get a hold of this truth that our prayer, our prayer hinges more on what your word says than anything we can think of, anything we can come up with. We have to depend upon your holy word and we need to pray according to your word. Not say if it be your will, but Lord, pray what your word says and then believe you and then put it in your hands. Lord, answer your way and in your time so it so will be perfect for my life. Lord, I pray for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior. Maybe they pray and they, they say, God help me. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but, but they can know you as Lord and Savior, and they can ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive their sins, come into their life, and be Lord of their life. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the church, for believers, those that already know you as Lord and Savior. I pray, give us a hunger for your word, a thirst for you, and a hunger for your word that we just won't be able to get enough of it. The more we eat of your word, the more we partake of your word, the more we will want. And I pray, Lord Jesus, put a fire under the church. Stir up the church. Put a, build a fire under the church. The fire of the Holy Ghost, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Uh, we'll have another video coming up on Wednesday from the book of Revelation. God bless you.